Ben's going to be here in a minute. Yeah. You're like, let's do this thing. No, I was like, let's do this thing. We're saying, let's do this thing. Yeah. Because you have this wonderful little no, this people here. Incredible. Yeah, thank, thank you. you guys so much. This is yeah. Ben isn't here yet. Yeah, I can ask you about your character. What do you admire most about? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't. We all think. We're all so myopic that we think all the streams run through our characters, right? But I do think that Harvey, he wasn't like a kind of theatrical villain and he wasn't completely a good guy. I, I think Harvey's kind of the most gotham -y character, right? Like, just in terms of just being, I live in this apartment, I've seen this town for many decades. You know, I've been around the block, and so I thought that he was a little bit of the everyman that could be, you know, a, a little bit of an everyday perspective on what it was like to be like. He was the one that would say, this is insane, because it was insane. And so I, you know, I love that Harvey was, he wasn't one or the other. He was pretty... He lived in the gray, kind of, right? He lived in the gray. You know, and, and, and early on, and certainly Ben can attest to this, but people were like, you're bad and he's good. And I was like, yeah. Life is more complicated than that. And, you know, certainly Jim Gordon was more complicated than that. He definitely walked on the other side of the fence a lot to get things done that needed to be done. So I think that's where H Harvey rubbed off on, on Jim, you know. What part of his arc were you most surprised by? Because obviously you start out with a character and then you, you kind of, you know, the show develops and you, you end up with, like, totally different. What part? You know, I have to say, I wasn't that surprised by it. All along, you were like... I kind of knew that he would be reluctant to take this young do-gooder on, but that this guy would kind of change him morally to, you know, to see things his way, to care. Because I think before Jim Gordon showed up, Harvey just wanted to either take graft money for a, little, a couple more years before he got to retire, but Jim kept him around. Which Batman, aside from Gotham Batman, is the best Batman? <laughs> well, or which is your Batman? Um, I would say, weirdly, not weirdly, Michael Keaton. Yes. Um, so that being said, I, I honestly think Christian Bale's you know, you see the fighter, the fighter like that guy. Hey, <laughs> did I say Christian Bale? Ben? Thank you. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Hi, good to see you. How's it going? Good. So, what is a memorable behind the scenes moment for the two of you? Oh, so much tea at craft service. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What type of tea? Tea? He makes, a, he makes a mean cookie. He's Irish. Yeah, he made, he made tea. You too. That was our thing. It's a mean cookie. A little bit, but it was, it was very cold. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being freezing all the time, and so tea was kind of our thing. Indeed, indeed. Uh, that's not very juicy, though. What do we have from that? Uh, Still lifted up. So. Yeah. We were in a lot of like crazy gunfights and like crazy. There was always like some. Big uh, set piece in the middle of the episode. It was like, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Just all the stuff we did. <laughs> like, it was five years of craziness. I know. I, I will say really quickly one of the nuttiest things was we were shooting that scene in the bank with the 50 cows, but my hair was so shot. Oh, yeah. 50 so I go over across the street, and the Teamsters were like, we were in the Bronx. And they go, watch out, there's a, there's a raccoon. And if you see them during the day, they're rabbit. This guy's sick. I'm like, where is this story? Like, be careful. So, have you yeah. ever heard this story? So. so this raccoon, I'm watching him, and he's going through the fence in the Bronx, one of the most depressing places. You yeah. have God bless it. Yeah, no, God bless it. So he walks out in the street, and he's twitching, and he's sick. And so all we can do is put up cone to try to protect this dude from drugs and stuff. And I look up, and I'm like, how's the raccoon doing? Like, he, oh, he's right over there. And I look up, and the raccoon walks away from his phone and the garbage truck comes out. Damn, Gotham! <laughs> Gotham! 
It's so no mercy. No mercy. No mercy. No mercy. Oh, the Bronx does not. Uh, It'll chew you up and spit you out. Yeah. Or run you over with a garbage truck. Right. Yeah. It was a very golfing moment. <laughs> Thank you, Ben, for protecting my uh, protecting me from 50 cal Oh uh, yeah, sure, sure. Do either of you have set memorabilia? <laughs> we were just talking about that. You want to fill them in? <laughs> or no, uh, we skip that part. That you were yeah. allowed or not allowed to There take. may have been a few suits that walked off. I mean, I wore a lot of suits. <laughs> and I'm not a guy who's going to go buy a bunch of suits. So. <laughs> I, may or, I may or may not have ended up with a couch from William Mann. <laughs> How would you theoretically acquire a couch? Like, that's a tough thing to say. No, I have, to, I have to run it through the proper channels. Because <laughs> oh, it's been since since day one of the pilot. I was yeah. like, Mom, that's you know, never did that before. And then whatever job I've done, that was like, man, what do you guys? You know, because they usually auction it off. Yeah, yeah that was killer furniture. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, did you want it for like the comfort factor, or just the like the memories that it's been there the whole time? He's just, gonna, really nice he's gonna couch. just put it in his house, a plaque, you know, with the Wayne Manor couch. In his house. I, I put stuff in storage nine years ago, around the time of Vikings, and I just, I, I don't know, I just got it out. I'm just finally back home. I would assume a couch is slightly more practical in everyday life than anything in the set of the Vikings. Only slightly, possibly. I don't know, would you have some Vikings? Not, not that, I never took it. Oh, never no. took it another show. Yeah. But, uh, but yes, I'm not saying this hypothetical. No one's saying that I have a couch. No. <laughs> or paintings from Wayne Manor. <laughs> Beautifully, yeah, oil paintings. At least they're not recording us, so. Yeah. No, not at all. Well. Yeah. That would be terrible. You're, you're going to go to call. Um, there were a lot of great guests on Walker. There were, man. Who were some of the ones you were most excited to have on the show? We had, I mean, because one of the great things about shooting in New York is that there would be all these incredible uh, actors who, would, who were, you know, mainly doing theater who would come on and give these great performances. So, you know, people like Michael Cerveris, who played Professor Pig, who's like a, you know, multiple Tony winner. Incredible. He was, Did you and Marina rehearse that answer? Because you both gave it to her. I know, I know. I know. Is it why? Oh, she, she said that too? Yeah. She brought it up yesterday, so it's like fresh in my mind. I mean, the problem is, like, there's so many that they forget. Who, who else? You know, I picked it because I was a huge fan of Julian Sands. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he was, uh, uncle. he was, uh, who did he play? Uh, the, um, Scarecrow. The Scarecrow's yeah. father in the first season, right? Yeah. And I love Charlie, who played the Scarecrow, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, Cameron. Mm -hmm. You know, Julian. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, for sure, and then of the villains, even, probably, there were, there were, you know, 50 or 100 built, like essential, iconic buildings, of course, of fun years. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Andrew was great, too, who uh, played old penguins, kind of like. Oh, yeah. The people in the. Yeah, the. You know, the but, but obviously, like, he's not. James Frame and Michael Chiklis, they were more in the to show, so it's not. They weren't guests, they were part of that. Yeah. We, it felt like we started off, we like, oh, we're going to have one big baddie over our, overarching, you know, off. Baddies will come in for little gigs, and then we'll have like one per season. And then by the end of it, it was like, wow, we'll have one and two and three, and, and just throw them all in there. Um, yeah, it got kind of pretty and Richard Kine? <laughs> Is he a villain? <laughs> no, no, no. Right no. All politicians, but no. No, no, no. Such a great guy. Oh, did you guys like him? They were all, they were right? They are, they are.
It's a lot of kid stuff. What about you? You do really good. I don't know. No. You know, so, my weekend now is pretty. Uh, a lot of hanging out with my friend in Jill's house. Yeah, pretty And then and Jiu Jitsu on yeah. Sundays. That's a, that's a guaranteed one. Hmm. So uh, that, that's a. How does Don Malone relax? Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> you on see Harvey Bush. I'm the most out of shape. Yeah, that's not true. But now it's. You know, after you get done, it's all change, you know, yeah, yeah. Or get stressed out, Yeah. My kids and I are, like, you know, I'm hanging, my kids are older now, but, mm -hmm. so. But when Gotham started, Ben had no kids, he was a single guy. That's true. And by, that was Christmas, season one, he was like, I'm going to Miami to hang out with somebody. <laughs> so, by Christmas of season two? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember, but like, how old is Francis? Francis is three and a half. Yeah. yeah. It's quite a personal family. It's incredible. Yeah, family. yeah. What yeah, totally. happened in the midst of this? Uh, but Ben was our captain. He was our leader. He was our, he was the set, you know, he was the, the guy who shouldered most of the, you know, when Ben shouldered the work on Gotham. That is, that is not true. He's a guy. You and I both were uh, in the trenches, man, and it's, uh, I, I, it's, uh, you really find out what people are made of when you work those kinds of crazy hours and you're around people for a long, long period of time, and um, it's a testament to, uh, to what a great group the, the producers assembled it. Like, everything was pretty functional. It never got weird. People worked hard and did a good job. It was a very, like, technically difficult, ambitious show to make, right, because they wanted to shoot a certain way and a certain look. Sort of, Tina had certain, um, um, you know, stylistically there was a lot of coverage, there was a lot of, like, you know, special effects and, and practical effects and all kinds of stuff. And man, you know, you want a real pro in there, and that's what Dolan was. And Ben wrote episodes, he directed episodes of Gotham, and um, it was, that was a real joy, a real treat. That was fun. But yeah, we didn't have any, I, I have to say, you know, you know Sometimes you can't really tell from the outside, but there are some shows that are so embroiled in the most right. ridiculously pathetic things. Although some of them are well known. There was a time when Ben and I would engage in a lot of um, fake pre taped super arguments. Yes. Yes. Just there were some shows where like, actors were like, it famously were caught coming at each other right before the camera. Yeah, 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 so yeah. We would, like, we would do that. <laughs> What would one of those arguments be over you? Uh, no, it has to be the stupidest stuff, right? Like, oh, you mean on the... On the, the fake ones. ones. No, no, the fake ones would just with, the, like, we would just go nuts. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Well, the, one of the jokes that we always had was like, everyone always assumes that, that TV stars make a lot more money than they actually do. So our jokes was over like, oh we, we would each give each other white wing burginis every year. Which we did not do. Every episode. Every episode. Right. <laughs> so I'd be talking oh. casually to people and they're like, yeah, did you get, I got a, I got a band of Bugatti for less. <laughs> he's like, that's crazy, man. You know that kid body of Bugatti? <laughs> and then we'd argue about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, which of you was on the project first? Because obviously the chemistry between the two. Well, that's funny. That's a funny story. You tell that. Do you want to go for it? It is, it is. <laughs> so it's over, I think. It was certainly before. I came back from Vikings and, um, and I had a meeting with Bruno Heller. And, uh, and so I went and met with Bruno and he said, we're concocting this thing. Mm -hmm. You can and you want to. And uh, we, would you like to come on as Harvey Bullock? He's the kind of mentor to Jim Gordon who comes in and it's going to be noirish, LA kind of, like almost LA noir detective show set in Gotham. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board. And some guy who pays people money got some, like, there's some um, internet rumor that yeah. Jim Gordon came out. With. Yeah. It was stupid. But I do think I was the, f I mean, Bruno had, it's not stupid at all. It just depends, like, without context, you don't know if you're doing the Gordon that we've often seen in the movies and, the, and, and even in the comics often is like the older Gordon. So are we doing, you know, Gordon seasoned detective slash commissioner, or are we doing an origin story? So yeah, there's this crazy rumor that you were going to be Jim Gordon. But I knew, I, I, I obviously knew it was completely fake, because he told me, Bruno told me that it's, you know, it would be, and I, I don't know if they didn't tell me, I, Ben and my sister from Southland, yeah. not, not well, you know, she worked on Southland, she really enjoyed working with Ben, and I just think that they didn't say anything because of 
I don't know, Bernard, 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 yeah, we, we had worked together, so that was kind of in the works, but he didn't call me until January of that year. Um, and then, yeah, and then we, we, sort of, we sort of chatted about it. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know Donal uh, personally, but I felt like I did because of, you know, not only his sister, who, who, who's an awesome actress who on Southland played a, a, a prostitute who I had by the neck, by the throat, <laughs> like, and was like, give it to me, give it to me, right? like, she was like, so intense, yeah, throw down. And um, so I was like, I bet you, you know, and I, I knew your resume, and I was like, I, I, I think he, everything's gonna be fine. But also, um, Brad Harrison from um, Grounded for Life, I remember I called Brad and I was like, tell me about this Donal Logue. And he was like, you know, he's the greatest dude, and he's a pro, and, and anyway. Um, it was very smart for Bruno to, to put both posts together, I think, you know, knowing I don't know, he didn't really know you yet, right? He knew me because we worked together. But you know, those guys call each other. Right, everybody. They call each other to go, you work with this dude, what's he like? Which makes a lot of sense because... It's a small town. Small town. One personal They're long days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, yeah, it was, so I think, yeah, I was the first person on board and, um, you know, I was just so lucky. And they got an incredible cast together. I knew Robin, Lord Taylor from... He auditioned for something I was doing ten years before. He didn't get it, but he was amazing, obviously. And and then the rest of us were just to meet every, just to meet the Corys and then put together. They put together an incredible cast. Yeah. We'll take audience questions in a moment. If anyone wants to line up, uh, do you have any advice for anyone who is an aspiring thespian out there, or aspiring superhero? Sure, sure. sure. Uh, oh, aspiring superhero. Yes. Uh, Let's go. Here. <laughs> I'm an aspiring superhero, I guess. Am I? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think the best actors are interested in a bunch of different stuff. Um, you know, I think if, you know if you want to pursue it as a career, it, it, it certainly doesn't hurt to um, to study it. Um, I'm in favor of people going to school first. You know, at least, at least college because um, it's a weird business, and you can like have some ups and downs, and like find yourself older without a fallback. Um, so I, I favor college, but um, yeah, just do as much as you can, do anything you can. Don't be don't be afraid of, of putting yourself out there. I mean, don't do uh, don't do in a PG way. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Don't do anything yeah, that makes you uncomfortable. Uh, anything that sounds fake is fake. That's a good. Anyone who wants money from you is full of it. Right. Um, and it's like skateboarding or baseball or singing and songwriting. Or dancing, if you don't do it, you're not going to be good at it. Right. You right. can watch other people do it and go, man, I bet you I'd be cool at this. Right. But until you do it for the first time, you're on stage going, man, I got a bunch of stuff to memorize and give to these people. You, It's 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 a craft, and you have to learn how That's to That's right. 10,000 hours or whatever that Malcolm Gladwell thinks. Yeah. I think that latter request is applicable to anything, right? <laughs> nice. Just go and do it. When people yeah. think it doesn't, they're like, can't pick up the phone, I've never done it. Pick up the phone and get me a career. I'm like, dude, could I pick up the phone and get the Lakers to sign you? No. Have you ever played basketball? No. But I look cool with a basketball. How hard can it be? The ball goesn't hoop. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. Yeah. Game over. Yeah, totally. Uh, what's your favorite? So there is a new DC show out called Pennyworth, and it's by Bruno Heller and Danny Cannon. What? And, yeah. And it's the first time hearing of it. So I actually did press for the show at Comic Con, and Danny Cannon is a total character. I'm yes. like low key obsessed with him now. Yes. So I was just wondering if you had any memorable stories from working with him. But also, really quick, Ben, do you have anything to say about when you first saw the SNL parody of the OC death scene? <laughs> No, I mean, that was funny. Yeah, it was really funny. Shia LaBeouf, right? Shia yeah. LaBeouf, yeah. There's this, like, hilarious OC death scene that they, they made fun of. They're like this crazy slow uh, So wait, the first part was about Danny Cannon, right? Yeah. Most of Danny Cannon's stories start with him yelling at the top of his lungs. That's how, like, his sort of, like, he's a, he's a, he's such a sweet dude, and, and when you get to know him, but he's, He's like an absolute field general out there. He's, you know, he's one of those guys who has probably directed what, like, 20 pilots, and probably 18 of them have gone to series. Like, he has an unbelievable track record. He knows every person's job on the set probably better than they do. 
Um, except for the actors. Um, and uh, and he just knows what he's doing, man. So you just you you you, you trust him, you know, and he um, he earns your trust very quickly. And and he's um he's a, he's the, honestly the hardest working guy on set. So so, so he's good. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Crazy scene, he'll walk over. Just, <laughs> just, just to focus yeah. on the camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For just, he's, uh, he's a perfectionist on yes. every front. Yes. And that's why he makes incredibly good yeah. television. Yeah. He came from the CSI world and like. Well, he created the CSI world. CS, he created the CSI world. He, that was him. He, did, he really was the driving force behind Gotham. Like, if you talk about Gotham, it really. Mm -hmm. Danny was the creative force behind it. Mm -hmm. And Pennyworth looks cool. Looks super cool. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, um, Ben, I love your work on Southland. I was wondering if that had uh, any influence on your portrayal of Jim Gordon in Gotham. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know, Southland was more realistic uh, in terms of the you know, procedural, I mean, the, 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 the technical you know, cop stuff. I'm trying to like PD, but I tried to bring you know a lot of that stuff that I learned to to Gotham and infuse it with a little bit of at least like mild plausibility. Um, I remember asking Bruno Heller if like we have a, 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 a usually have a technical advisor on set when you're doing a cop show that's supposed to be realistic, and he was like, you know, <laughs> like at the end of the day, you're going to be battling like, you know. Super natural. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze guy. So, you know, you had to play a little fast and loose with some of the like, tactics that you'd use as a cop. But there's a mentality and there's a there's a way of holding yourself and and, and, and you know, I think between the two of us we we made it, you know, plausible. Yeah, you Yeah. You know, Ben and Southland, they they trained, they did high speed well, yeah, we did the uh, courses and the gut that like he knows his stuff so well and it makes I think it's important. And now because of Ben, if I watch I've played a lot of cop shows yeah. like now if I watch stuff it's really not no, it's it's your job if you're a cop to you know, how do people hold guns, how do they approach it? Right. Right. Yeah. He does that. Have you had to do any of the boot camps? Because you have been on quite you've been a ton of stuff. You don't military stuff. I did huh? military to do camps, yeah, for um, you were doing all the stuff would be a long time That's right. all the uh, heaven and earth and <laughs> from uh, from Civil War or for the Patriot, like That's right. Uh, I'm not sure how applicable uh, muskets yeah. are now, but like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much gunplay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks for the question. Hi. Um, my question is for Donald Lowe. I was wondering, what was it like playing a vampire in the movie Blade? Dude, they gotta have you back for more. They gotta have you back for more. No, you know, what's up with that? I, I enjoyed being a naughty vampire god. <laughs> Blade was one of the most fun things of all time. It was incredibly... It was not like a job, it was just a blast. We, you know, we had as much fun as it probably looked like. We were happy. But yeah, and it was the first, you know, it's really kind of arguably, really the first Marvel movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were so bold and cool to have, um, you know, to have, we you know, have a superhero, have Wesley as the superhero. I was going to say, like, Black Panther is not technically. No, perfect. it's not. You know, I don't mean to be like, yeah, his blade yeah. gets the respect, but that was, that was cool. They were on the right right go from the get-go. And I, I know that Marvel, you know, is at a different point in its history. It was not, that Marvel became what it became was not a fate accomplished, you know, so. It was incredibly fun, thanks. Thank you. If you could be any villain from Gotham, who would you be? I'm gonna keep going back to Professor Pigwell. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it, but I think, you know, what Cameron did with, uh, with Jerome Jeremiah. I, I, you know, actually that would be too challenging to be, but that, I don't know. I, I love Corey and Robin so much too, that what they, I just love watching those guys all. I love watching them work. 
That was amazing. Thank you. Hi, Ben. Uh, how did you develop the voice of Gordon? Did you sound like that during uh, um, auditions already? Or? No, I was... <laughs> Um, I remember looking at the scripts and, the, and you know, Gordon is such a, like, uh, he's such a, uh, he's such a throwback, you know, he's like a, he's an old school detective, like, I remember Donald describing the cars that we drive, it's like, when you draw a car as a kid, you know, you're like, oh, God, like those square cars, like from the 50s, you know, or the 60s, like that's, that's where he's from. He's from a, a time where honor and, you know, sacrifice and loyalty and all these sort of, you know, grander, more, um, you know, kind of, uh, I mean, expatriotic or, 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 or chivalrous. chivalrous, chivalry is a good word. Um, concepts came into play, and, 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 and that's the juxtaposition, right? One of the primary juxtapositions is living in a world where it's completely fallen and decadent and, and indulgent, and he's just not that guy. Um, and so I remember reading the scripts and going, er, 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 it was, it might have been, I guess it was the pilot, and going, he's so like, er, 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 you know, kind of like, this is not how it is. And, and so I, I started just kind of going, you gotta own it. I mean, you can't. Harvey, you, uh, you know, I, I don't agree with your uh, police tactics here, uh, you know. You gotta just kinda go, I'm a, he's John Wayne, I mean, he's, it's a western. He's John Wayne and he's standing there with this, you know, uh, uh, six shooter just going, come at me. Um, you know, or, or Humphrey Bogart or somebody like that. He just stares the, yeah, stares the bad guy in the eye and he says, all right, you know, put him up. Um, so that's, that's where the voice came from, I guess. Um. I think Tom Hanks said something about, because it, it, there was a timeless, not a timelessness to Gotham, but there was this new target. Is it Dickensian London? Is it, you know, 50s? Is it 70s? I like a period piece without having it. Without defining it, right? But Tom Hanks said something about that, which was people just didn't speak. They spoke differently back then. They were more careful about what they said. They weren't so loose with the language, and um, I think that's what we were going yeah. for. Yeah. Gordon is not a man of small talk, and these were not men of, of small talk, and he kind of, everything about him is a little bit rigid. Um, the way Danny and Bruno described it was a blend of um, an LA Confidential, Bud, it was Bud White, and um, it was, it was, um, Guy Pierce's character and uh, uh, Russell's character, um, sort of between the two, right? Like he could he could be both the kind of like stickler for the rules and the rough and tumble guy at the same time. But that was a great reference because it also had a time in you know 1950s, so it had like a, a sense to it. Um, period. Yeah. Good question. Thanks. So we have three minutes left. I'm going to try and speak through these. Okay. Um, Gotham had a lot of good arcs. Which was your both favorite arcs that you had on the show? Story arcs. Oh, the weekend? Yeah. Ooh. I had fun when, I mean, it was nice to occasionally let loose because I was playing so, like, was such a, like, stoic kind of guy. So when we did the, the Clayface stuff, I liked, you know, I liked the identity swapping stuff because it was just like, that was really you know, good. to make fun of yourself and those guys. Uh, you know, from the from the get go, when Jim Gordon first was in the GCPD, and like I flipped down a newspaper, like, who's this dude? That was the ride I was on for for five seasons. You know, just Harvey wondering what Jim's play is in back then. And then yeah, then you often he he always has a play. You know, the guy who's gonna throw the bad idea so that I throw the good idea, or like you know. <laughs> I had so much fun, you know, <laughs> and by the end of it, the scenes we did in the captain's office, even when Jim comes in and says, you're out, right. it got so, I felt like our scenes in the captain's office started getting right. heavier and heavier, and it was great. I was so fun. Thanks. Hi. Um, both of you did great uh, representations of the characters, and I think a lot of us enjoyed not just a different take, but also that you had such great actors supporting you. That um, I'll speak for everybody who 
who believe in this, but I feel that the show kind of kept going on, but that's just being fans. I'm just curious, would you ever like to see a full-length film that kind of bridged over? Because we saw a taste of it and would love to see a lot of the characters just do a film that just kind of showed the bridge instead of showing him coming back being an adult. But seeing uh, Gordon, of course, age, having everybody really become the characters that the comic books portray. Yeah, I think that would be great. <laughs> I mean, I always felt, we talked about it, I, I, there's so many stories in that piece of the world. It would, have, it would have been really easy to envision a world where we did 10 or 12 seasons of it and David became, naturally became someone in his mid to late 20s, you know, so, yeah. But absolutely, we could reprise these in a heartbeat. Thank you. All right, last one, super fast. Um, can you tell me of a vaccine story about Jada Pinkett Smith, and would you ever go on a red table talk? <laughs> yeah, I'd go on a red table talk for sure. Um, that's her, you know, that's right, the thing, the series. Absolutely, I watch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you're sorry. You want a behind-the-scenes story about her? Jada's just a pro. I mean, Joe's just a staying stone cold pro. Like, you know, she just so she was in the first season, and then she'd like pop in every once in a while, like unkillable. Um, and, uh, and, you know, she's just a pro. She was, she, um, she was there to do it, do it well. She was super easy to get along with. Um, and, uh, and, you know, invaluable, you know, because she's, like, such a massive presence um, in this very, like, intense, in a good way, like, small package. She's, um, yeah, she was cool. There was a lot of filming on season one, especially because the rivers were both frozen that year. But right. we had some nights that were definitely 30 below with wind chill and stuff. And Jada's in a good cocktail kind of cushion in a dress, and right. never, I've never seen anyone not like just show up, do her thing, stand on the dock. She's freezing, yeah. doesn't complain about anything. She was like Ben said, just an amazing person, just stone cold. And the Red Table Talk is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I think she got nominated for an Emmy. I don't know how. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh. That is all we have time. Awesome. Well, thank, you. thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much.